everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Series TBD. Still haven't come up with a name for it, but it's a series where we play Legacy Vintage, sweet old decks and cards that we don't get to play anyplace else. And I'm really excited this week because we are playing Cadaverous Enchantress, a deck you probably remember from an instant deck tech like a week ago. And the reason I'm excited for this deck, well, apart from the fact that it draws a ton of cards when it goes off, but I'm mostly excited because this is a $330 Legacy deck, which is essentially a budget deck by Legacy standards. If you consider that in modern, we usually set our budget at around $100 and decks are like $500 to $1,000. $300 in Legacy, where decks are $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, uh, is actually cheaper than a $100 deck, I think, in the modern format and uh, comparable to like a $100 deck in the standard format. So basically, it's really budget friendly compared to the normal cost of the format. And we're going to give it a shot, see if this works, because if this deck actually can compete, uh, it seems like a good entry option into the format. It avoids most of the really expensive cards, and you can always upgrade it into a more tier build of Enchantress. So we're going to give it a shot, do a quick two-minute refresher deck tech. Uh, to get a full breakdown, make sure to check out the instant deck tech for the deck. Anyway, let's talk Cadaverous Enchantress. But first, a quick reminder. If you haven't already, it would be super cool of you. If you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Cadaverous Enchantress, and the main idea of this deck is to stack up Enchantress effects, things that draw us a card whenever we cast an enchantment or when an enchantment enters the battlefield, like our Gothian Enchantress, Enchantress's Presence, Eidolon of Blossoms, to draw tons and tons of cards. And then we have also have Herald of Pantheon, which kind of ramps us by making our enchantments cost less, good against aggro for the life gain, Brain Maggot, an enchantment creature that works like a thought sees, to disrupt our opponent, get the force of will or whatever out of their hand. And then the other big piece of the combo is our mana ramp. So Utopia Sprawl, Fertile Ground, Wild Growth, all essentially plus one mana. And remember, uh, these are more than just plus one mana because they are also triggering all of our enchantresses. So eventually, Wild Growth is essentially free since it costs one, but it adds one immediately. But it's also going to draw us a card or two cards or three cards, depending on how many enchantresses we have on the battlefield, which which means we keep developing our mana and eventually draw a massive handful of cards. Abundant Growth, just card draw, mana fixing. Important with our budget mana. Our mana base is mostly just forest, but we have like four different colors worth of spells in the deck. So these fixing enchantments really key to being able to cast everything. Then we have a few disruptive enchantments. Sterling Grove, a tutor that protects our enchantments. Blood Moon to just lock our opponent out of the game. Elephant Grass, kind of this weird green version of Ghostly Prison that has a cumulative upkeep but slows down creature decks. So that's kind of the core of the deck. And then as far as winning the game, what we're working towards is Cadaverous Bloom. So Cadaverous Bloom, weird enchantment, five mana, but that's not a big deal with all the mana we make, that lets us exile a card from our hand to add either double black or double green. So the idea is that we're going to stack up all those enchantresses, cast a ton of our cheap enchantments, draw a ton of cards, then we can just exile the cards from our hand with Cadaverous Bloom and either Bane fire our opponent for 20 20, kill our opponent, or just hard cast an Emrakul, take an extra turn, attack, annihilate our opponent. So that's our big plan for winning the game. So basically, stack up enchantresses, play some janky enchantment creatures, draw a ton of cards as we make all this mana with these random enchantments, Cadaverous Bloom, Banefire, or Emrakul to close out the game. We also have one Grim Guardian, which is a weird backup way to close out the game if we're just casting all these free quote-unquote enchantments that draws cards. We can just drain our opponent out slowly. Replenish gets our stuff back from the graveyard if it's countered or killed. Nykthos makes a bunch of mana once we get going and it's pretty budget friendly. Rest of the mana base, as I said, mostly basic forest, couple of fetch lands, one shock land, a mana confluence. So putting our mana enchantments like Utopia Sprawl on the right color, really important to being able to cast our black cards, our red cards, all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, in the sideboard for creature decks, Doom Wake Giant, Elephant Grass, slow our opponent down, Wrath Their Board, Solitary Confinement can lock combo out of the game in conjunction with our enchantresses drawing us cards so we can keep feeding it by discarding a card, Aegeus of the Gods to shut down combo, Sealed Primordium for artifacts and enchantments, Abrupt Decay, Catch-All Removal, Fairy for Graveyards, and that is Cadaverous Enchantress, and that is our Series TBD $300 budget legacy deck for today. So let's get to the gameplay, see
see if you can actually compete in a $3,000 format with a $300 deck. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay, and I'll be back in a bit with a wrap-up. All right, series TBD time. We are playing some budget legacy this week. Budget Cadaverous Enchantress, and, well, okay. We'll see what our opponent's doing, but we have Enchantresses. This hand seems actually pretty reasonable. Uh, windswept Teeth go. We're going to wait on this Utopia Sprawl, I think. Yeah, let's wait. It's so much more powerful after we have down an Enchantress. Island. Opponent. Passing. Well, crack Windswept Teeth. Grab a Forest. Untap. Uh, play a Forest. Play Enchantress. Do you have a counter? Opponent. No counters. Thought Scour. And they have the counter. All right, opponent's got the days. Well, yeah, that's unfortunate. Opponent. Island. And passes. I'll play a forest. Play Herald of the Pantheon. Play Utopia Sprawl. Gain a life. <laughs> Opponent, counter tribal. All right. Well, pass the turn. That is a lot of counter spells for sure. Opponent, Flooded Strand. Terramander. Well, that's going to end up a 5 5. Opponent, passing. Well, play a forest, play Eidolon of Blossoms, gain a life, draw a card, play Wild Growth, gain a life, draw a card, opponent cracks Flooded Strand, Volcanic Island, more Spell Pierces, alright, well, that is a lot of counter magic, get in with our Herald, pass the turn, opponent, Ponders, so this can become a 5-5 five five for one mana. And since we didn't resolve that Yopi uh, Utopia Sprawl, we're actually a little mana screwed as far as casting Brain Maggot. Opponent does not shuffle, plays a land. Cracks the land, gets a mountain. Abrades our Eidolon. Opponent passes. Well, enchantments, especially enchantments that make black mana are what we really want here. Down to 21. Opponent passes. Ugh. Well, Enchantress's presence. Gain a life. Unfortunately, we are unable to cast both cards in our hand. That might be one of the drawbacks of this budget build, is if we don't get down Utopia Sprawl type stuff, uh, we have a hard time... We have a hard time uh, casting all of our stuff. Another Terramander. Oh, God. It's a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, we are in some serious trouble now if we don't draw something. Opponent gets in. Terramander. Sure. We take 5. Down to 17. Opponent passes. We draw. Abundant Growth. Well, play Abundant Growth. Gain a life, draw a card. Well, that does give us more colors of mana. Play Brain Maggot. Gain a life, draw a card. Elephant Grass is actually helpful if it resolves. And it should, thanks to Brain Maggot. Take a peek. Delver and Days. So take a Days. Play Elephant Grass. Gain a life, draw a card. This is going to make it hard for our opponent to attack us. And Fertile Ground is another good draw. Fertile Ground. We're back up to 21, and we might be getting there. That was a good turn cycle. Go to combat. Attack with Herald hit our opponent and we even have the bloom in hand which can come down basically at any time we're like an enchantress away from just going off through a million counters and terramanders well you got opponent they have to pay two for each attacking creature which is a pretty big pinch on our opponent's mana opponent yes elephant grass was a really good draw yeah we're not that far away from just literally going infinite the pinch is basically card draw now Opponent, combat. Gets it. Yep. We will take five. Down to 16. Opponent. Delver, sure. And passes. Uh, well, we will definitely pay one for Elephant Grass. Oh, that is Emrakul. So, step one, black mana. Brain Maggot. Just to do a double check. Gain a life, draw a card. Wild Growth, okay. Opponent. Young Pyromancer. Well, we'll take it. Play 
Wild Growth. Draw a card. Gain a life. Tap. Play Abundant Growth. Draw two cards. Gain a life. <gasps> oh, that's Nykthos. Okay. Nykthos. Tap for green. Enchantress's Presence. Draw a card. Gain a life. Now the only real problem is... We're all green mana at the moment, so we can't win this turn, because we can't get down Cadaverous Bloom. Ooh, Replenish 2, Elephant Grass. All right. Well, Elephant Grass, part two. And next turn, we should be able to just win the game. All right. And uh, we've had our fun. No attacks. Pass the turn. Opponent makes a 5-5. Five, five. But this one, I think this one's over. Opponent needs a spectacular card on top of their library. I guess a counter spell stops Cadaverous Bloom for a turn, but it doesn't win them the game. Flooded Strand on top. Yup, game. Flooded Strand. Wastelands us. Sure. Cracks Flooded Strand. Opponent. Gets it. Hits us. Pays a bunch. Yup. And this life game from Herald has actually been pretty helpful. Down to 17. Uh, we are going to decline. Decline, decline. Play a forest. Play Cadaverous Bloom. Draw some cards. Gain some life. And now we win. Um, so. Exile Enchantress. Utopia Sprawl. Draw some cards. Gain some life. Uh, put it on, uh, white. Elephant Grass. Draw some cards. Gain some life. I mean, basically, we just need to find Banefire. Do some exiling. Exile the lands. Play... Grim Guardian. Actually, maybe we don't even need Banefire? Eh, there's Banefire. Enchantress's presence. And now we just Banefire. Drain our opponent. Exile some cards. Exile, 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 exile. Add red. And Banefire you. And that is how you do it on a budget. Through the counters at all. Uh, 14? 14 will do. And that is the plan. That is the plan for Cadaverous Enchantress. That was a perfect example of what this deck is trying to do. Almost exactly the plan. Uh, all right. Against this deck, Blood Moon feels pretty bad. So let's go down Blood Moon. Go up the two Solitary Confinements, which seem like pretty decent lock pieces in this matchup. Abrupt Decay is for a bit more removal, and probably one more Elephant Grass is necessary. Going down, that's a big question. What do we cut? I guess, like, Grim Guardian. Doom Lake Giant could be sweet, too. They do, yeah, I think we actually do want Doom Lake Giants. At least, at least some. What do we not want? Maybe we go down, like, one Sterling Grove. Maybe we go one Cadaverous Bloom. Go down... One Herald of the Pantheon, one Fertile Ground. Let's uh, let's try it like that. Well, game one, that went pretty well. <laughs> the deck's janky and cheap, but that was an impressive performance for our deck, I have to say. Uh, all right, no lands. Mm, okay, Herald of the Pantheon, I think we're going to bottom it for now. Well, counters are a concern, but we have double Enchantress, so we play our stuff and hope. Island for our opponent ponders this isn't really a deck that plays around counter spells too much it's more a deck that plays through the counter spells opponent uh chooses to not shuffle i assume yeah no shuffle and passes well forest and wild growth resolves pass the turn solitary confinement is sweet but we need enchantresses going first or it's not sweet mountain and Young Pyromancer. Hmm. Hmm. All right. We draw Forest. Ugh. No days, no days, no days, no days, no days, please. They have the days. Well, I don't think we can avoid it. It's tempting to wait a turn, but uh, they're tapped out of Spell Pierce, man. I feel like we just have to go for it and hope. Opponent, Pyromancers. Gets in. Yeah. Down to 17. Passes. I'll play a forest. Eidolon of Blossoms. Resolves. Draws a card. Opponent has the bolt. Yup. We draw Utopia Sprawl. Ugh. All right. Well, 
this is a hand where Doomwake Giant would be absurd. If we could draw and resolve Doomwake, oh my goodness. No Enchantresses is bad, though. That is bad, bad news. Pona, yeah, doing their stuff, brainstorming, making tokens. Wasteland, doesn't do much. Pona, gets in for a bundle. We take five down to 12. Opponent passes. We draw. Well, all right. Elephant grass. Windswept teeth. Pass the turn. So this at least slows our opponent down and gives us a couple of turns to draw something. Brainstorms. Makes a token. Yep. Doomwake. Doomwake. This deck really is all about the enchantresses. If we don't have an enchantress, life gets hard. Opponent attacks. Hits us. For two. Down to ten. Uh, passes. Well, we gotta pay one. This elephant grass is going to run out as well. Alright, well, Enchantress. Come on. Doesn't get dazed. Resolves. Crack windswept teeth. Down to nine. Take a forest. Wild growth. Draw a card. Ponet. Has a daze. Sure. Um, huh. Alright, we'll pay has another days. Well, that's fine. Fertile ground. I mean, this is fine, assuming our opponent can't, like, bounce elephant grass kill us. Then it would not be fine. Island. Combat. Gets it. Yep. Pays. Down to seven. Opponent passes. So we pay two for elephant grass. Play. Play fertile ground. Draw a card. Opponent has Spell Pierce. Makes a token. We cannot pay. We draw a card. Play Utopia Sprawl. Draw a card. On white. Pass the turn. All right. Well, next turn is the Solitary Confidement turn. Opponent. I guess en enough Lightning Bolts could kill us this turn. Combat. The other problem is we still only have one white mana. Gets in. We're going to take it. Down to five. Delver. All right. So now we let Elephant Grass go. Play Solitary Confinement. Draw a card. Play Fertile Ground. Draw a card. Oh! Oh, Big Daddy Doomwake. Play Sterling Grove. Draw a card. Pass the turn. And now we are in very good shape. Very, very, very good shape. Delver doing its thing. We have Solitary Confinement. So Solitary Confinement, if you don't know it, beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice it unless you discard a card. Skip your draw step. You have Shroud. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to you. So since we have this Enchantress going, we can afford to discard cards. Opponent going to get Frisky. Uh-huh. We take zero. Opponent passes. We discard Solitary Confinement. Play Utopia Sprawl. Draw a card. On Black. Brain Maggot. Draw a card. Yeah, well, there's Emrakul for when we get to it. See what's in our opponent's hand. Delver, Delver, a braid. So we take a braid, and now, just for the rubbids, uh, do make giant? <laughs> wow! Out of here, legacy cards. Uh, pass the turn. All right. And uh, I think that does it. I think that does it. Opponent's passing. We discard Emrakul. Shuffle everything back in. Wild Growth, draw a card. We would like another Enchantress. Ugh. Okay. Uh, Wild Growth, draw a card. Enchantress. Go to combat, attack. Opponent takes it. Pass the turn. We might have to sack this Solitary Confinement. Opponent's passing. So I think what we have to do is... Sack Sterling Grove. Search for... Solitary Confinement. Opponent. They only have one red source, so they can't bold us. We know they have two Delvers. Two Delvers, two unknown cards. All right, so now we sacrifice Confinement. Draw Confinement. Ooh. Wow. Wow! That was an insanely good draw for our opponent. All right. Well, we're back to having risk, because we have no enchantments. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Down to six. Play a forest past the turn, and uh, this is it. We got to draw an enchantment. We need an enchantment. Opponent, Delver. Yup. 
Come on, any enchantment. Any enchantment. Nygthos. Combat. Attack. And there is a world where we lose this game. There is a world where we lose. Opponent wins the flip with like a lightning bolt and it's game. Delver. Oh my goodness. Terramander. Okay. No flip. Delver. Come on, enchantment. Enchantment, enchantment, enchantment. Uh, and we're not going to crack it. Abundant growth works. Play abundant growth. Oh, wow. That was a pretty crazy game. We got there in the end. The scary part was when our opponent... Uh, <laughs> surgical to our solitary confinement we had a nice little lie there where we sacrifice it get another one draw a couple cards win the game but that surgical actually made that a lot scarier than i was expecting uh i thought once we had surgical our solitary confinement down we were good but we kind of fizzled because we only had one enchantment but we still got there with doom Wake giant being super super key and uh yeah apparently you can uh constellation and legacy it's a thing it's a thing that's working sweet all right <laughs> series tbd time we are playing some cadaverous enchantress in legacy and uh this hand hmm hmm this hand feels pretty slow and bad we're on sterling grove sack it tutor up yeah we're just gonna mulligan well okay this hand is not much better. Wild Growth is interesting. All right, we'll keep Wild Growth. This hand, I don't know if it's much better, but it does have potential just Blood Moon our opponent. Birds of Paradise. Well, potential slightly less now. Opponent passes. Now play a forest. Play Wild Growth. Pass the turn. Still going to want an Enchantress. Boat it. Looks like they're playing something fair. Horizon Canopy. Birds of Paradise. That's about as fair as it gets in Legacy. Opponent. A green Sun Zenith? It's a Green Sun Zenith. For Gaddick Teague. Gaddick Teague actually isn't that good against us. Ooh. Hmm. We can Forest. Fertile Ground. Yeah, let's do that. Play the Forest. Fertile Ground. Fertile Ground. Enchantress. Pass the turn. And next turn we get to start drawing cards and see what happens. Windswept Teeth. Opponent cracks. Come on. Non-basic. Don't play around this. Don't play around this, Blood Moon. Non-basic. Okay. The Birds of Paradise means we can't really hard, hard lock our opponent, but Blood Moon should still annoy them pretty well. Sylvan Library. Yeah. And passes. Oh, attacks. All right. Down to 18. Opponent passes. Let's see what we draw. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Okay. Uh, in that case... Play Nykthos. Play Enchantress's Presence, draw a card. Play Brain Maggot, draw two cards. See if our opponent's got anything relevant. Uh, we'll take Swords to Plowshares. If our opponent wants to try to beat us down with Armadillo Cloak, we're pretty okay with that. Pass the turn. Well, this is where we want to be. Opponent gets to Sylvan Library. They need something pretty good, though, because next turn, the card draw... It is quickly going to become overwhelming. And our opponent probably needs to spend their wasteland on this Nykthos. Puts him back. Keeps one. I'm sure they have to wasteland this. What did our opponent find? Three mana. Wow. Runs out Armadillo Cloak. Opponent's just going to go aggro? Okay. That is fine. Gets in. So we're untapping with Nykthos? What is happening? All right. I mean, we'll take it. Down to 14. Well, I like our odds, since we're going to get a Nykthos turn. Last card is... Ooh, crop rotation. All right. So they do get to Wasteland Nykthos. Sure. Opponent passes. Well, let's see what we draw. Enchantress. Well, play a forest. Play... I guess this is free. So play Wild Growth. Draw two. Play Enchantress play blood moon draw three that's a lot of lands a uh, herald is nice all right pass the turn and we are pretty much exactly where we want to be now yeah we're taking a little bit of a beat down from this gaddick teague but our opponent only has one functional mana 
with the Birds of Paradise, and we are set up to draw cards for days and days. Blood Moon kind of oddly punishes our opponent's wasteland as well. Opponent combat gets it. I mean, this life gain, as long as it doesn't actually kill us, we will find our Emrakul and win eventually, and we do get to start gaining back a bit of life with Herald of the Pantheon. Opponent. Scavenging use. Yeah, that's fine. Opponent passes. Well, play a land. Herald of the Pantheon. Enchantress's presence. Draw some cards, gain some life. I guess we should have left up Fertile Ground. Yeah, that was a slight mistake. All right, Abundant Growth. That actually doesn't save it, does it? Hmm. Well, play an Enchantress. Yeah, we kind of messed up our tapping there, just a bit. Abundant Growth. Draw roughly a new hand of cards. Yep. Auto yield to everything. And we should be able to win next turn. Draw another card. Um, pass the turn. Discard land land uh Grim Guardian. And I don't, I think we actually don't need all the enchantresses now. All right, opponent, this is your time to shine. Kill us now or forever hold your peace, I think is where we're at. Maybe we shouldn't have discarded the creatures thanks to the scavenging ooze, but I don't think it matters. I think the odds of us winning next turn are so high. Opponent attacks, attacks. I actually think we're just going to chump with an enchantress. We're almost drawing too many cards, as crazy as that sounds. Opponent passes. All right, we untap Utopia Sprawl. So, uh, Utopia Sprawl, draw a million cards. I guess, actually, we can't play, hmm, this is a little awkward. We need to get to the point where we just hard cast an Emrakul, I guess? Because we can't Cadaverous Bloom through Gaddick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Now I'm actually worried that we might mill ourselves out. Actually, no, we don't mill ourselves. This is fine. Because we're going to draw the Emrakul eventually. So let's tap this. Fertile Ground. Add some mana. 23 cards. Utopia Sprawl. On white. How are we doing mana-wise? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. This ooze is actually a problem. Are we actually in trouble here? Eleven. Oh, I wish these were May abilities. That's the biggest problem. Yep. On green. Play Herald of the Pantheon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I guess this Gaddick is actually annoying. All right. So... I think we have to choose to not play anything. Pass the turn. Should we play Elephant Grass? I think we do not. Let's pass the turn. Do a bunch of, a ton of discarding. We can't discard the Emrakul, and we can't discard creatures. All right. Because if we discard the Emrakul, our opponent can eat it with the Scavenging Ooze, and then we lose that Shuffle in forever. So we need to either get Gaddick or Ooze off the table, and then we're good. Those are the two options. So we actually want our opponent to go attacking. Because if we can kill either of these creatures, then we win. Opponent, combat, passes. Well, Fertile Ground, draw some cards. The other plan is just to get to Emrakul, cast it and win. Wild Growth. Hopefully we have a land left. We really need lands. All right, there's a land. Play a land. Oh, <sighs> so four, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, so we pass the turn. Bonnet. Crop rotates. Yeah, it's a forest. Starts eating stuff. Well, discard, 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 discard. Oh, wait. Our opponent tapped out of ooze mana. Huh. Okay. Do we discard Emrakul? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Eh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna hold on to it and try to win. I think that's fine. Maybe that's too greedy. It seems like we're pretty safe to try to win here. Opponent does their stuff. 
What was their draw? Knight of the Reliquary. Sure. Opponent, combat, and passes. Well, all right. Now we cast an Emrakul. Get an extra turn. Pass the turn. No attacks. Play a forest. Go to combat. Attack. Annihilate six. Huh! Well, that was a little bit longer and clunkier than we hoped, thanks to that Gaddick Teague, but... Uh, it worked pretty well. I mean, that was, it was successful. So against this deck, interesting, interesting, interesting. Opponent's playing fair, very fair. I feel like we want Doomwake Giants and Abrupt Decays. Those feel like our main answers. And then I think maybe we just go down like Grim Guardian, a couple of Brain Maggots, and a Herald. We could bring in another Elephant Grass. Eh... All right, let's say with three. Let's run it like that. We might regret it, but our opponent's creatures are big enough that they can kind of attack with just one and win. Well, okay. This is not a dream hand by any stretch, but we do have an Enchantress. Enchantress's presence. Wind up, Deeth. Opponent passes. Ugh, more lands. Well, Forest, Utopia's Brawl on black past the turn. Well, we do need to draw enchantments. All we really have is Enchantress's presence. Opponent. All right, gonna crack the Windswept Teeth. Sure. Savannah. Green Sun for zero. Gets a Dryad. Arbor. Gaia's Cradle. Boy, we actually want a Blood Moon. Well, Forest. Enchantress's presence. Pass the turn. Opponent. That's a pretty sweet looking Gaia's Cradle. I like the promo. Please don't kill it. Thalia. All right. Thalia's obnoxious. Man, Doomwake would be insane here. Opponent gets in. Not here, here, but like in another turn. Opponent passes. Hmm. I'll play a forest. Fertile ground. Draw a card. Yeah, more forests. All right. Pass the turn. Savannah. Palace Jailer. Well, that's going to draw our opponent some annoying cards. Yep. Becomes the Monarch. Goes attacking. Down to 17. Oh, come on, Doomwake. Doomwake would make me so happy here. Worst case, we at least need an enchantment. Ugh, enchantress. So now we have to play an enchantress. Oh, we're over tapping. That's not a non creature. So play a forest. Play an enchantress. Kill Thalia. Pass the turn. Gotta do it now to cut their mana a little bit with Gaia's Cradle. Well, we'll see. We are definitely enchantment light at the moment. We have enchantresses, we have mana. The good news is we're like one draw away, theoretically, from really going to town. Opponent untaps. Another Thalia. Well, that's not the scariest Thalia. I guess it does stop our Nykthos from coming into play untapped. Ether Sworn Cannonist. Ugh. Hate cards for days. Uh, that's that is very bad for us. Cannonist is super bad. Opponent draws an extra card. <laughs> Wild growth. Draw two. Pass the turn. Well, I guess we play Nykthos. I guess, I think our opponent might just have us here. That Cannonist. Ugh. Maybe we shouldn't have killed the Thalia? Wasn't really expecting Cannonist. Bajukabog. Hits our abrupt decay. I don't think we have enough mana to Emrakul yet. Opponent has tons of mana. Green Sun for three. Knight of Autumn. Hits a Wild Growth. Okay. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. So one, two, three, four. So that's only plus one. Yeah. All right. Opponent gets in. Hits us. Down to six. Draws an extra card. Yeah. All right. Uh, Utopia Sprawl. Draw two. I believe this puts us to dead, though. Yep. All right. Well, that was a lot of tax pieces. Opponent had a lot of them. Is there anything we can do? Hmm. Maybe we want these brain maggots after all. Maybe we don't want replenish. And maybe we do want the brain maggots to just get random tax pieces. And we probably do need the elephant grass as well. Boy, Doomwake would have been sweet. What can we cut? Maybe we go three brain maggots... And go down one fertile ground, I guess. Actually, let's go down and... Yeah, let's go down abundant growth. Run it like that. Let's see what this hand looks like. Eh, okay. 
We will keep it. We do have an Enchantress. Well, Wind Swept Teeth. Crack it. Grab a Forest. Topius Brawl. On black. Pass the turn. And see what our opponent can do. Marsh Flats. And passes. Hmm. All right, let's Brain make it. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Well, our opponent left in their Swords to Plowshares, which means this Cannonist is happening. And Cannonist is the worst card for our deck. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I'm kind of surprised they left in Swords to Plowshares, honestly. Yep, there goes Brain Maggot. That is going to slow us down a bundle until we find, like, an Abrupt Decay. Yeah, there's Cannonist. It sort of slows our opponent down, but not really. Playing Enchantress. Play Mana Confluence. Pass the turn. Yeah, that is the worst card for our opponent to have. Opponent untaps. And they can even kill our Enchantress with this Zealous Persecution. Their hand lines up oddly well with what we're doing. Opponent gets in. Hits us. And there's the Zealous Persecution. Yup. Down to 17. Opponent passes. We need an Abrupt Decay desperately. Play an Enchantress. Pass the turn. Oh, this Cannonist. Makes me want to cry. Dryad Arbor. Opponent. Combat. Attacks. Yeah. Down to 15. Passes. Well, play a forest. Fertile ground. Draw a card. Pass the turn. Abrupt decay. Maybe we should have brought in Seal of Primordium. I think that might be a misstep on our part. Because I guess technically that does kill Cannonist, even if it doesn't hit anything else in our opponent's deck. And Cannonist is their single best card. What did our opponent find? Palace Jailer. Oh, man. Oh, dear. Dear me. Dear me. Dear me. Well, that is the card advantage our opponent needed. Goes attacking. Yep. Down to 13. Opponent draws. Well, play Elephant Grass. Draw a card. Ugh. Another Bloom. All right. Pass the turn. Yeah, we should have probably brought in Seal of Primordium. Although maybe that's going too far. They probably have one Cannonist in their in their deck, and you can't even Green Sun Zenith for it. So it might just be that it's unfortunate that our opponent's been uh, hitting it so consistently. Gaia's Cradle, Mana, Infinite, Wasteland, Wasteland's Mana Confluence. Okay. Combat. Attacks. And Gaia's Cradle is going to let our opponent pay for all of this. Well, we're getting very close to... Very close to Abrupt Decay or Bust. I guess Doomwake is still reasonable. Opponent draws an extra card. So we have to pay one. Well, Elephant Grass, draw a card. Oh! It's an Abrupt Decay. Well, we're going to kill it now and go for it. Oh, we can't cast it yet. You're right. Uh, all right, pass the turn. So, all right, we have a chance. We have a chance. We get to Abrupt Decay this Cannonist, untap, start drawing cards, and go from there. Wasteland for our opponent. Blows up a land. Combat. Opponent. Attacks. We do only have four mana, which is an ideal. Opponent pays. Yep. Well, we take two. Down to six. Ramanomp Excavator. Well, Abrupt Decay Cannonist. Opponent gets to draw an extra card. Ugh. All right. We're going to let these go. We're not dead on board. We draw another Elephant Grass. Well, add some mana. Utopia Sprawl. Draw a card on green utopia sprawl draw a card on green fertile ground actually let's wild growth first wild growth draw a card oh doom wake so close fertile ground draw a card and elephant grass draw a card and pass the turn well this is it this is it. What does our opponent draw this turn? 
If we get to untap with this Doom Wake, we're good. We're golden. We got Cadaverous Bloobs. What does our opponent find this exact turn? Desperation Sack. They need, like, a Gaddic Teague. I guess Gaddic Teague doesn't do it. They need to kill us or draw something very impactful. Thalia. That doesn't do it. Opponent. Doom Wake Giant takes care of that. Goes to combat. Attacks, attacks. Yep. Oh, I think we pulled it off. It was close, but I think we got there. We dropped to two. Opponent draws an extra card. We untap. We stop paying for elephant grass. We draw an elephant grass. So step one. Hmm. We have eight mana, nine mana. All right, so let's just doom wake. Doom wake giant. Draw a card. Kill stuff. Forest. Fertile ground. Draw a card. Kill stuff. Elephant grass. Draw a card. Kill excavator. And now we pass the turn. All right. That's it. All right, opponent. Show us something spectacular. Opponent untaps down to three functional mana. Four mana. Savannah. What do they got? Opponent passing. Drawing an extra card. Okay. Well, Elephant Grass goes away. So play Cadaverous Bloom. Draw a card. Bonus done! Cadaverous Bloom! Oh, we were right on the edge, but our deck keeps working. Oh, we were going to draw another Enchantress, too. And another. Yeah, that was over. It was over. Oh, we had, what, six man in hand, or eight man in hand, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And the Nykthos, yeah. We just had an Emrakul for the win. Pony almost got there, but Doomwake Giant <laughs> doing its thing in Legacy. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, series TBD time. Playing some Cadaverous Enchantress in Legacy and, ooh, Eldrazi Temple. Well, this is going to be interesting. This hand has a lot of what we want. Utopia's Brawl on Forest on... Um, let's just go green for now since we have Abundant Growth. The next turn we can Enchantress Abundant Growth, potentially. Wasteland. Haha. -ha. Nice try, opponent. All right, opponent has Matter Reshaper. And passes. Well, play a Forest. Play Enchantress. Play Abundant Growth. Draw two. Pass the turn. This is a big turn. See what our opponent has here. Next turn we can Enchantress Brain Maggot, which is pretty good. Thought Not Seer's annoying. All right, Mutavolt. Yeah, it looks like Thought Not. All right. So our opponent could take one of our Enchantresses. And now we get to the Slog. This is one where Elephant Grass is going to be really good. I assume they just take Enchantress to keep us from drawing too many cards. Yep. Enchantress 2 bites the dust. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 17. Sure. Windswept Heath. Huh. <clears throat> All right, play the forest, play Herald of the Pantheon, play Utopia Sprawl, draw a card, put it on, I guess, black, and then Brain Maggot, draw a card, gain a life. Ew. The Great Flood. Uh, all right, so we take Endbringer and pass the turn. Well, come on, enchantments. That's what we need here. Pass the turn. Opponent, Eldrazi Temple, and Eternal Scourge, sure. Mutavault, opponent goes attacking, hmm. Yeah, let's kill Mutavault, untap, enchantment. Well, Brain Maggot is technically enchantment. Play Windswept Teeth, crack Windswept Teeth. Get a forest, play Brain Maggot, draw a card. Ugh, more lands, nothing in hand, all right. Well, pass the turn. We are a bit heavy on lands at the moment. Ancient Tomb. Matter Reshaper. Opponent. Gonna go attacking. Block Thought Knot. Take six. We need a draw. We need a draw. Enchantress. Ugh. Play Enchantress. Play a forest. Replenish. This doesn't actually help much, though, because we're going to have to block with... Ugh. Yeah, we're going to have to block with an Enchantress, which isn't good. 
Hmm. Bone it. Thorn. That would be annoying if we weren't already dead. Goes attacking. Yeah, so we have to block, block. Ugh, giving up this enchantress is super painful. Block, block, block. Drop to two. We draw Herald, and we scoop it up. Yeah, we just kind of fizzled uh, card draw-wise. Could not find a... Could not find our payoffs. All right, opponents playing Eldrazi. So Elephant Grass, good. Solitary Confinement, good. Seal of Primordium, necessary. Going, uh, do we want Doomwake? Doomwake could be good enough. What do we cut is the bigger question. Go down Grim Guardian. Blood Moon's great. I think we can cut Herald of the Pantheons. Huh. Herald of the Pantheons. Maybe a couple of brain maggots. Go one, well, we kind of want both blooms in case one gets thought knotted. Maybe we go down one Sterling Grove, one bloom. Yeah, let's try it like that. We're on the play, which is nice. Well, okay. Only one land, unfortunately. But Windslap Teeth, crack it. Forest, also no Enchantress. Utopia Sprawl on black. Pass the turn. Eldrazi Temple and Eldrazi Mimic. Opponent passing. Come on, land. Eidolon. Well, let's Brain Maggot. Snag a Thought Not Seer. Pass the turn. Ooh, this is going to be sketchy. We really need to draw lands. Wasteland for our opponent. Mattery Shaper. Grows the Mimic. This is a fast clock. Yeah, opponent, gonna get in, hit us, down to 16, land. Abundant growth, hmm. Well, Utopia Sprawl, on green. Yeah, pass the turn. Not super hopeful with where we're at now, Wasteland. Yeah, we need to draw one more land, opponent. Oh no, they drew another Thought Knot. Uh, endless one, all right, that's another big one. Opponent, combat, gets in for seven. Hits us. Down to nine. We draw. Nykthos. Well, play Eidolon of Blossoms. Draw a card. Pass the turn. Wasteland. Thorn. Eternal Scourge. All right. Well, this is it. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. I think we're still dead. We block here. We take six. Down to three. Untap. Draw. Utopia Sprawl. Is there any way out? We don't have... Oh, this mana situation. So we have five mana? Wow. Yeah, this is unfortunate. This costs three. One, two. Yeah. Hmm. We can't actually play our solitary confinement. That's the issue. All right. Abundant Growth. Draw two. Forest. Oh my goodness. So close, but yet so far. Wild growth. I don't think there's a way out, though. Forest, yeah. Ugh. Well, that one Nykthos really stuck it to us that game. And maybe it's our fault. Maybe we should have named White with one of these Utopia Sprawls. Ugh. If we could have got down Solidary Confinement, I think we win that game. But there was just no way with only two lands. We needed to draw one of these lands to make White mana to then play Solitary Confinement. And then we proceed to win. But, ugh. Yeah, we didn't hit our land drops. Hmm. All right. Well, that was disappointing. I feel like we have the tools to really compete with this deck post-sideboard, and we kept a risky one-lander with a bunch of enchantments to make mana, and it didn't work out. All right. All right. Series TBD time. Playing some budget cadaverous enchantress in Legacy, and ugh, this hand has all the cards we want, but no mana to cast them, so we got a mulligan. All right. I guess we keep this? Utopia Sprawl's pretty good. Well, let's see what our opponent's doing. All right, it's counter time. Scalding Tarn for our opponent, Volcanic Island. And Elver. Opponent passes. Well, Forest, Wild Growth, Resolves. Well, pass the turn. Delver of Secrets. Does our opponent get the flip? They do, with a Brainstorm. Hmm. Well, there's a Delver luck. Opponent gets it. Down to 17. Passes. I'll play Nykthos. Play... Herald of the Pantheon. 
play Utopia Sprawl. Gain a life. Alright, opponent's got a bolt. Sure. Well, set this on black. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. We know they got a brainstorm in hand. And they definitely have a delver to beat us down with. Opponent. Thinking it over. There's the brainstorm. Maybe the ugliest of brainstorms. Opponent. Does brainstormy things. Cracks their fetch. Underground C. Ponders. All right. The cantrips keep a flow in. Well, we'll see what our opponent has. We can Enchantress's presence through a daze. No shuffle. Flooded strand. Cracks flooded strand. The problem is we are at risk of just dying to Delvers. Opponent. Okay, Grimag Angler. Well, that's a big ol' attacker. Opponent gets in with Delver. Down to 15. Brain Maggot. Well, play Eidolon of Blossoms. There's the days. Oh, lordy. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Yeah. Well, this is the kind of start we don't want to see on the draw. Double threats, double disruption spells, and a super fast clock with a million cantrips. Life is relatively bad now. Actually, really bad. We could have tried to play Enchantress's Presence to play around days. The problem is, then we're not doing anything else, and then we're not doing anything for a long time, and then we still kind of just lose. So I feel like we're so far behind, we can't afford to play around days there. If we were more at parity, like if there was not a Gurmag Angler, we would definitely play around days. But since our opponent has likely a two-turn clock, or definitely a two-turn clock, we don't have the luxury of playing around anything. We just gotta hope to get lucky, essentially, because we're already dead, more or less. Opponent, young Pyromancer. All right, keeps playing the dorks. And yeah, I don't think there's a card in our deck that gets us out of this. Opponent passes. We draw Enchantress. I mean, Enchantress is cute. Play Enchantress. Play Brain Maggot. Draw a card. Do we have days number two? New. No. Ugh. Force of Will, Delver. Well, <clears throat> I guess we take Force of Will. Pass the turn. Is there any even slight chance that we get out of this, though? Opponent. Tax with everything. Eh, we block. Opponent gets back. Force. Down to two. Passes. Um. Well, play Fertile Ground. Draw a card. <clears throat> Grim Guardian. Eh, that's not helpful. All right, yeah, we're dead. Okay, okay, okay. Well, that was a good start for our opponent. We get to bring in two Doomwake Giants, two Solitary Confinements, and another Elephant Grass. Uh, I don't know about Abrupt Decays. Go down Grim Guardian. Go down... Huh. Go down Grim Guardian. Go down a Herald of the Pantheon. Go down an Abundant Growth. Hmm and maybe like a brain maggot and a hmm <laughs> um maybe we just go one blood moon blood moon actually seems really good against our opponent's deck um let's go one bloom run it like that all right we're on the play which is good news um hmm <sighs> okay we have an enchantress so i think we have to keep this but we do not have any one-man accelerants, unfortunately. So we're looking at trying to start to play magic on turn two, and ugh, in a world of days, that is sketchy. Opponent, underground sea, passes. Well, forest, fertile ground. We actually kind of need this to resolve, so we have black mana and white mana. Opponent, wow, spell snare. Yeah, that's actually really bad for us. We drew another black card, and now we just can't cast our hand at the moment. It also means this Enchantress's presence can get dazed next turn, which is less than ideal. Opponent passes. We'll play a forest. Yeah, play Enchantress's presence. You got the daze? Opponent does. Yeah, this has kind of been the nightmare scenario for our deck. Spell snare for the fertile ground, allowing for days to work against enchantress's presence opponent brainstorms and now we got literal nothing going on scalding tarn shuffles away the bad cards underground sea thought sees well jokes on you opponent our hand is uncastable 
opponent. They get it over. Do they take the card we can cast, or do they take a, a potentially more powerful card if we somehow draw the mana for them? That's our opponent's question. Probably don't take the card we can cast, because it's just a wild growth. It doesn't actually do anything. Opponents carefully considering... Takes Replenish. Bonet passes. Well, come on! Something that makes mana of colors! Alright. Uh, pass the turn. Opponent. Flooded Strand. And there's a young Pyromancer. Opponent passing. We draw. Well, alright. Wild Growth. Gotcha. <laughs> pass the turn. Well, we're seeing... I'm, I guess in some ways I'm glad this is happening. Because we definitely are seeing... Some of the downsides to our budget mana base, which is, uh, this is going to happen sometimes. If our opponent can counter our mana fixing enchantments, we're just not going to be able to cast stuff. Opponent, cast a bunch of cantrips, plays land, goes to combat, gets it. Down to 18. Well, we draw, well, all right, play an enchantress, see if our opponent has a counter. If we get spell snared, I'm gonna cry. Ooh, resolves. All right, so, um, wild growth, draw a card. And, yeah, let's just pass. We can take one more hit here in elephant grass next turn. We still need to draw into, eh, bolts our face. Hmm, well, maybe we'll regret not elephant grassing. We're gonna be down to 10. Wasteland, that doesn't do much. Opponent, hits us to 10. I guess that's still a lot of bolts to kill us. Well, play Enchantress's Presence, draw a card. Play a Forest, Elephant Grass, draw two cards. Oh, not more lands. All right, there's a Wild Growth. Opponent cracks. Is it hard cast Force of Will time? It might be. All right, there's a Force of Will, makes a token. Well, Wild Growth, draw two cards. Elephant Grass, draw two cards. Utopia Sprawl, draw two cards. And we pass the turn. All right, all right, all right, discard a forest. So our opponent can attack us with two creatures unless they can get rid of Elephant Grass. Thought sees. sure. We might actually be good here. We got off to maybe the slowest start in history, but we're kind of back in the game now. I guess that's the power of Enchantress, is once you get going, it goes pretty quick. I think we did semi-misplay by putting this Utopia Sprawl on the forest. Because now we're going to have to spend two mana, essentially, for this Elephant Grass, when we don't really need to. Hopefully it doesn't matter in the long run. We're basically looking for Solitary Confinement. If we find Solitary Confinement, we pretty much, pretty much lock up the game. Pretty close to lock up the game, at least. Opponent takes a Brain Mega. Interesting. Combat. Attacks. Sure. Hits us to seven. Yep. Well, yeah, we waste a mana, unfortunately. Pay for Elephant Grass. Start with Enchantress. Play a Forest. Utopia Sprawl. Draw three cards. There's Solitary Confinement. On white. Brain Maggot, this should be enough. Draw some cards. Make sure there's no counter. Stifle Brainstorm. So take a Brainstorm, Solitary Confinement. Um, pass the turn. Discard, land, land, land. And land. All right. And now our opponent has to deal with Solitary Confinement, and I'm not sure how many options they have. Pyromancer, that's fine. We can also let this elephant uh, elephant grass die now, which is nice. Opponent passes. So elephant grass goes away. Discard. I guess elephant grass now. Uh, and now we start playing stuff. So Utopia Sprawl on a forest. Draw some cards. Ooh, that's a Nykthos. Utopia Sprawl on green. Fertile Ground. Uh, actually, let's see. Let's play Herald. Start gaining a bit of life. Fertile Ground of Forest. Draw some cards. Gain some life. 
Yeah, now I think we have this pretty much locked up. The Blood Moon should pretty much should pretty much finish it. Oh, well, or Doomwake. I guess we have a bunch of options for finishing it. Let's add a bunch of green mana. Abundant growth, draw some cards, gain some life. I don't know if we're going to show Doomwake. I don't know if you want to show Blood Moon, actually. That might be the worst one to show. Oh, now we might be able to just win. Abundant growth resolves. Add a bunch of mana. Play Cadaverous Bloom. Draw a bunch of cards. Gain some life. Uh, start exiling. Exile, exile. Idle on a Blossoms. Draw a bunch of cards, gain some life. Exile. Oh, we need red mana, don't we? Um, we do need red mana. Well, I guess we can just Emrakul. That also works. Yeah, this works. Exile, exile, exile. Uh, Doomwake Giant. Draw some cards. Wrath our opponent's board gains some life. Yep. Opponent's gonna stifle the trigger. Alright. Well, now we... Exile everything. And... Emrakul. Take an extra turn, and that should do it! Whew! Alright. That was good. That was what our deck wants to be doing. That's the plan, and it worked out well. Run it back. It looked grim. We started off super slow. Super slow, not being able to cast anything. And we still got there. So, uh sweet well let's see if we can do it one more time and actually win uh win the match all right we are going to mulligan i think blood moon is appealing but this hands to oh dear dear me oh my budget mana budget mana uh <laughs> all right well we're keeping this Sorry, Enchantra. Oh, dear. This does not look good. All right. Potters. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, okay. The second hand wasn't good, and we also can't get black mana. Well, come on, miracles. Like, literal miracles. Opponent. Passes. Well, Temple Garden tapped. Pass the turn. Polluted Delta. Opponent cracks it. Volcanic Island. And there's young Pizzy. Oh boy. Opponent passes. Well, Forest Goo. <sighs> Pass the turn. Opponent. Adapts. Ugh. <laughs> One of our two wastelandable lands. Yeah. Well, it was in our opening hand. Windslip Teeth. Go. Opponent. Lightning bolts our face. Down to 15. Untaps. Combat. Hits us down to 12. Yeah. Well, okay. Wind sub teeth. Crack it. Get a forest. Crack it. Down to 10. Get a forest. Uh, how about Enchantress's presence, opponent? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's the days. Well, five cards is rough. Definitely rough. Pass the turn. About it. Wasteland. And whew, Kermag Angler. Okay. Gets in. Down to six. Well, alright. Elephant Grass. This does stop Kermag Angler from attacking, but eh, opponent has force. Alright. And that does it. Well, that one! The Magic Gods were not pleased. Not a whole lot we could do about that after uh, mulliganing to five. We put up the best fight we could, but it wasn't really much of a fight, honestly. Well, see if we can get him next time. All right, series TBD time. We are playing some budget legacy cadaverous enchantress. Well, we'll keep this. The sand is mostly what we're looking for. We lost the die roll, which, eh, not ideal. The biggest thing about losing the die roll is it turns on Daze, and Daze is super obnoxious for our deck. Well, Forest and Utopia Sprawl. On, um, huh. Let's go green. Pass the turn. Well, no Daze is nice. Opponent. Untaps. Volcanic Island. And 
passes. Hmm. I'll play a forest. Play fertile ground. And all right, might as well brain mag it. See what happens. Resolves. Oh, opponent's playing control. I'll take a Jace. Well, there's good news and bad news. The good news is our opponent, at least right now, does not have a counter. And if we get down this Enchantress's presence, we can probably outdraw a Jace. The bad news is our opponent gets one turn to find a counter and or thought sees. Also, they have a Jace. That is also a bit of bad news. Ooh, Brainstorm. That's, that's a really good draw for our opponent. That's the card that could potentially find them what they need to make this all go wrong. Opponent passes. Grim Guardian. Well, play Mana Confluence. Play Enchantress's Presence. Oh, no. Wow. All right. Well, good game, good game. <sighs> Pass the turn. That was brutal to the max. Replenish is interesting, though. Man, that was a good brainstorm. Opponent passes. I'll play Nykthos. Add green mana. Uh, it's not actually gaining us mana, is it? Hmm. Well, replenish. Get back Brain Maggot. Get back Enchantress's presence. Take Coligan's command, I guess. Pass the turn. Opponent. Kills Brain Maggot. Untaps. There's a land. Well, here comes Jace. Can we chain together what we need to get through this Jace? We have down an Enchantress's presence, which is a good step one. There's the Jace. Brainstorms with Jace. Well, it's a Jace fight. We don't have a way to just kill a Jace, so we basically got to play through it. Opponent passes. We draw Abundant Growth. That's not bad. Huh. Well, step one, Grim Guardian. Draw a card. Drain our opponent. Step two, play the Forest. Play... I guess we play Fertile Ground? Play Fertile Ground, draw a card. Drain our opponent. Nykthos Mana. Play... Abundant Growth. Draw two cards. Drain our opponent. We really need another Enchantress. Ugh. Hmm. Well, Elephant Grass. Draw a card. Drain our opponent. Utopia Sprawl. Draw a card. Drain our opponent. Enchantress. Pass the turn. Alright. That's what we got. That's what we got. Up to two Enchantresses. What do you got, opponent? Brainstorms with Jace. Yup. This Grim Guardian did some work. Opponent is down to 12. Two mana. Ugh, thought sees. Well, there goes our only enchantment. Okay. Follow up. Thief of Sanity. Well, we need to draw an enchantment. That is it. Any enchantment. Opponent passes. We have so much mana, we're actually going to just pay for this. Well, that is an enchantment. So we need to make Nykthos mana first. Play Blood Moon. That's actually the perfect enchantment. Draw two cards. What do you say about it? You got an answer? Or are we done? Yeah, that was a perfect draw. <laughs> oh, another Enchantress's presence. Okay. Blood Moon. Pony gets one land. Yup, gets an island. Drain our opponent. Enchantress's presence. Draw two. Drain our opponent. Utopia Sprawl. Draw three. On green. Drain our opponent. Wild Growth. Draw three. Drain our opponent. Utopia Sprawl. Draw three. And opponent is done! The Blood Moon! We got there! All right! Yes! All right, Budget Enchantress coming through, and we got through the control deck somehow. The Jaces, the removal spells, we were able to get there, though. All right, what do we want against control? That's a good question. And I don't know if we got a good answer. Doomlight Giant doesn't seem great. 
Elephant grass is fine, but we don't want more. Solitary confinement doesn't stop... Well, I guess it does stop Jace, doesn't it? Hmm. We might want solitary confinement. The shroud aspect is nice. Yeah, solitary confinement's in. Herald of the Pantheon's out. Run it like that. That's the plan, that's the plan. One more. One more for the winning record with... <laughs> budget Legacy. Not a budget-friendly format, but... Apparently, I mean, apparently it could work. Um, huh. Okay. I mean, we got Enchantresses. We pretty much, if we have an Enchantress, we pretty much keep. And we have two. We would like to draw Mana Fixing Enchantment. Bloodstained Mire. Pawn, it cracks it. Elephant Grass does seem like it is at least a little relevant. Underground Sea. And Thoughtseize. All right. Take your pick, opponent. Take your pick. Do your worst. Takes a brain maggot and passes. Well, forest goo. Opponent. Volcanic Island. Baleful Strix draws a card. Opponent passing. Well, Windswift Teeth. Goo. Well, next turn we can cast the Chantress's presence and just cross our fingers. Opponent land. Cracks it. Maybe this deck has more creatures than we thought. Bad lands. Well, him to Turok. Ugh. Alright. There goes our Enchantress. Pony gets in, hits us. Um, yeah, I guess we crack. Temple Garden, tapped, untap. Play a forest. Please no counter, please no counter. All right, presence down, pass the turn. That's a good start, that's something. Let's see what our opponent has. Oh, double him to Turok. Okay, Bloodstained Mire. Opponent goes attacking, hits us, passes. I'll play Utopia's Brawl. Draw a card. On black. And pass the turn. Opponent. Thief of Sanity. Yup. Well, this elephant grass is going to be nice. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 16. Banefire's not as nice. Well, play Eidolon. Draw a card. Draw land. Ugh, no land. All right. Well, opponent gets to get in a Thief of Sanity hit, which isn't ideal. Swamp for our opponent. They could steal, like, our Emrakul is, like, the worst thing they could hit, I think. Elephant Grass will shut down these attacks once it gets down. We're just pinched on mana at the moment. Opponent, Mills and Enchantress, Utopia Sprawl, takes something. And three mana. Um, huh. All right, discard Banefire. Opponent cracks. Swamp. Wow. Stole our Brain Maggot. All right. Grab something, opponent. We did really want this elephant grass to shut down these attacks. It would have been very helpful. Yeah, takes elephant grass. Passes. We draw nothing. Well, hmm. Let's brain maggot. Draw a card. N into nothing. Take the force of will. Play a forest. Abundant growth. Draw two cards. Oh! Wow. That is the worst. Well, I mean, we're going to block and get back this elephant grass. Opponent gets to steal one of our cards. Wow. Hitting all those lands is very, very bad for us. Uh, step one, play a forest. Utopia Sprawl. Draw a card. Put it on white. Utopia Sprawl. Draw a card. Another forest. Put it on white. Elephant grass. Draw a card. Opponent has a force of will. We draw abundant growth. Well, abundant growth. Draw a card. Oh my goodness. Sterling grove. Draw a card. Pass the turn. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Opponent untaps. Gets to get in with thief of sanity. Hits us. Steal something. Our bigger problem is, because of this Thief of Sanity, we could be out of win cons. If they've exiled our Emrakul, I'm not sure how we're going to win the game. Opponent top decks Brainstorm. Well, when you're basically empty-handed, Brainstorm is probably the best top deck in Legacy. Plays a land. Opponent passes. Well, upkeep. Sack Sterling Grove. Well, Emrakul's still in our deck, which is good. So let's take Elephant Grass. Draw. Play Enchantress Presence. Draw a card. Ooh, 
replenish a play a land play elephant grass draw two cards pony has a counter however there is good good news and that good good news is we draw replenish um attach some auras attach some auras attach some auras that's a lot of triggers oh goodness replenish replenish combo we're gonna draw a lot of cards i don't think we die here to milling ourselves out i hope this also stops the attacking i think this should just basically do it brain make it brain make it that replenish was key and we're gonna finish with a winning record with a budget legacy deck budget cadaverous enchantress well i mean the deck was pretty good we finished with a three two which is i mean not a bad record especially when you're playing a 300 dollar deck in a three thousand dollar deck format so uh yeah not bad not bad and we get to crack a treasure chest uh this deck was sweet it was super sweet well it just goes to show there are decks that compete that can compete in really expensive formats without being really expensive and uh apparently this is one of them well, let's crack our one chest. See what we get. Ooh. <laughs> Bitey the Carrion Imp Treasure. All right. Thank you, Bitey. Blink Moth Nexus. Playable card. Not a valuable card. Legion's Landing. Also playable, but not valuable. Eh, not a bad treasure chest. Not good value-wise, but some cards that we might use eventually. Well, this deck was better than I would have imagined for being a budget legacy deck, but that's something for the wrap-up. We'll talk about it in a minute. All right, be right back. So what did we learn this week about Cadaverous Enchantress in Legacy? And overall, our $300 deck actually worked surprisingly well. We finished a competitive Legacy League 3-2, and two, which 3-2... Uh, and two, I mean, it's not a 5-0, but we posted a winning record. That's a record that'll slowly grow you a collection, earn you some ticks out of treasure chests. So it's a good enough record, and the deck felt surprisingly good. I mean, the good news is the deck is really powerful, and you can see in our combo turns, once we get going, uh, not much our opponent's going to do that can actually stop our deck from doing its thing. So that was the most impressive part. We beat some really good decks. We beat Is It Delver, we beat Maverick, we beat Grixis Control. Loss-wise, we lost to Grixis Delver and to Eldrazi, which, the Eldrazi matchup, I still feel like we have the pieces to win that with our creature hate stuff. Solitary Confinement, Elephant Grass, but we had some clunky draws, and if there's a downside to this deck, we did occasionally have issues thanks to the budget mana. That was a theme of some of our losses where we would just have like this all forest draw and our first enchantment that would fix our mana like Utopia Sprawl or Fertile Ground would get countered by like a daze or something and that we just wouldn't be able to play a decent amount of our hand. We wouldn't be able to play Cadaverous Bloom or Brain Maggot or Blood Moon or Sterling Grove. So that is an actual concern. However, Overall, even with the somewhat inconsistent mana base, uh, we still function pretty well, and I feel like you could change the mana base without increasing the cost too much, like play a full playset of Windswept Teeth, maybe throw in an Overgrown Tomb as an additional shock land, and for like another 30 bucks or 50 bucks or something, the mana would be much improved. So overall, the deck was really powerful. Cadaverous Bloom was really good game-winning way to end the game. It was never an issue, never a problem once we got going to actually close out the game. We were able to beat some good disruption. Uh, most of our problems, apart from just kind of beating ourselves occasionally with clunky draws, uh, the counter spells can be brutal. That's basically what a lot of our matchups come down to. Does our opponent have force will? Does our opponent have days? We can try to play around days a little bit, but you can't really just play around days forever, especially with this deck, where if we're not impacting the board, we're going to fall behind because we don't have much removal or anything. So you kind of just got to hope that the opponent doesn't have those cards or hope that we draw enough enchantresses to fight through them because that was what we saw in some of our matches where yes our first thing gets countered maybe our second thing gets countered but if we can stick just one enchantress presence our gothian enchantress or idolana blossoms it doesn't really matter because we're gonna make up all those cards and that's how we won a lot of our games against like grixis control against delver like against grixis control our opponent literally him him us, which we're down to one card in hand one card but we stuck in enchantment's presence after the first hymn and we are able to 
easily rebuild and win that game through double him to Torak, which uh, it, it, the old saying is him, him, I win, because normally you discard four cards at random, you are not going to win that game. That usually ends the game, but it just takes one Enchantress to pull it out, and that's the power of the deck. So if you pick up the deck and decide to play it, definitely focus on the Enchantresses. Those are the most important cards. Be skeptical of hands that are just all mana or all utility pieces uh, without any Enchantresses, because that's really what you need in this deck, is at least one, preferably two Enchantresses, and then the hand is good, and then all of our random bad cards, Utopia's Brawls and Wild Gross, that are just not that impactful on their own, become really powerful. One card in the deck I'm not sold on. Uh, well, I guess there's a couple weird ones. Grim Guardian, it was good in one game. I don't know if it's really worth it, though. Not really sure about Herald of the Pantheon. Sometimes a life gain, I guess, is helpful or relevant, but I'm not sure... It really does enough to be worth a slot in the deck, since it's not an enchantment itself. So, I don't know. Uh, I'm a little bit on the fence on that one. Solitary Confinement was great out of the sideboard, to the point where I almost just want one in the main deck, especially since we can tutor up with Sterling Grove. It's probably worth just having one to find whenever we need it, because it's so good in certain matchups. So, overall, if you're looking to get into Legacy on the cheap... I don't think you can go wrong with Cadaverous Enchantress. I don't think it's a top tier deck, number one in the format or anything, but you could definitely take this deck, go to a Legacy Tournament and compete with it, or pick it up on Magic Online in 5-0 a league with it, or do whatever, because uh, it is competitive and good enough, and we fought a lot of the top tier decks in the format, and we're able to either beat them, or at least give them really good fights. So, overall, very impressed with Cadaverous Enchantress, especially considering just that it's $300 in Legacy, which, again, as I mentioned in the intro, $300 in Legacy, that is way cheaper compared to the normal cost of the format than our $100 budget in Standard. In Standard, you got decks that are like $200 to $400, and we play $100 as a budget. Uh, in Legacy, decks are really consistently two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000, so $300 uh, is a percentage of the normal or average price of the format. is just incredibly cheap, so if you like drawing lots of cards, you like sweet cards, Combos. You like Cadaverous Bloom, a nice nostalgic enchantment as a finisher. Seems like a good option. So anyway, that's been our series TBD for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.